In this segment, we're going to look at doing the 3D model of an inloaded, uh, uh, moment loaded beam. Um, so, again, we're fed over the engineering data. Next step is to form the geometry. Um, I already have space claim open. I've set the units to inches and I've oriented myself so I can look at the end view. And I've, I've chosen a configuration that allows us to use the same coordinate system as in the beam model. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to create the cross section and then uh, uh, create the, and then pull that for the length. So 0 0.03125 and 1.25. So I have my cross section and now we can pull that. So now we hit enter. Select the pool. Hit the space, so we can grab that and I'll hit type in 24. You can see that that uh, successfully defined the geometry. Um, though I can see that I didn't succeed in doing that in the same axis as before. But we'll look at XY deflection now instead of uh, XZ deflection. Um, you can uh, you can lay that out any way you want. Um, I could also rotate this, but we'll stick with the with the same setting that we have right now, since it doesn't matter for the analysis. So I have my geometry. I can come back now and open up Antis Mechanical, so I can begin to do the editing process. All right, so. Now we can come in and we have our uh, geometry. I didn't do this on the prior one, but we really ought to make sure that my material is assigned correctly. And indeed, it wasn't, um, which uh, those other results were for, I guess we'll go ahead and stick with the steel. Um, so you can see what happens with, uh, uh, with PLA. So we'll select the structural steel. Um, now, let's see, so we come with the mesh, and I'm going to want to create some controls in here so I can parameterize this and see this, the size, study size. In this case, my there's not really an area I want to refine locally, so I'm just going to select a sizing, and I'm going to select the whole body. Select that, geometry apply, and then I'm going to start with a uh, with a coarse size, and, and we'll, we'll say one inch element sizes. And let's, all right, so now I've got my mesh. Now I can come in here to my status structure. I want to set my boundary conditions, so we'll support this. I really want to do this on the face, which is going to be hard to see. Let's select that face and apply. So that side's fixed. And now let's select the moment. We're going to select that face there, apply, and components. And so we want to take that moment about the Z axis. Tend to be consistent with what we had before. Um, so we can, I'll go ahead and select it, parameterize that so we can make that a function of the uh, number of, so we can, we can actually, we won't parameterize that, we'll make a load settings. So we'll make multiple load steps. So I think we did seven last time. Seven load steps. And we also wanted to go back and get out statistics and nodes. Okay. So now my moment, I can set this is to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 5, 1, 2, 5, and 10. And solution, let's go ahead and look at our on Mises stresses, 
and then we want to put uh, deformation in there and this first one will be our x deformation and the second one y deformation now even because even though we have a beam that we're modeling we don't really want to use and we don't even have to have a beam tool because we're not using beam elements. Those are specific to the beam elements. Uh, so now we have, used to find, I do need to specify, that's x-axis. And we need to change this one to y-axis. If I wanted to look at these in another coordinate system, then I could come up here and create a coordinate system and then call that in the name. Um, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and solve this, uh, this solution. Again, even though I solve in seven cases, it's solved pretty quickly because it's linear. Um, again, I have this error about deformation is large. Uh, let's take a look at what that deformation looks like. Um, uh, it looks like my signs are opposite um, what they would be uh, because of the uh, they're, they're opposite what I should have done because my moments uh, I should put these in as a negative Z that way my, it'll just match what I had with the other one so let's, put, let's pull out parameterize extreme values here. Um, now, I have the lightning bolt here because I updated the information. It shows it's not current with my settings, but this is still for the other side. Again, we see approximately zero deflection of the X in the linear analysis um, and about 31 inches, um, which obviously is a little hard for a 24 inch specimen with linear elastic analysis. Um, and stresses, you know, are large. Um, okay, so again, I can come in and I can change this, and you'll want to analyze it both ways with small deflection and with large deflection. Um, and, and I'll point out, first of all, that you can get these coordinate points um, by extracting values here. Um, and, and you can just simply copy and paste this or export it in order to get that in and create plots of those deformations, of the tip deformations. Um, so we'll go ahead and just solve that again. Um, it's going to go the other way because I changed the direction of the moment. Um, and then we've also changed this to a nonlinear or large deflection analysis. Okay, so now here comes the fun parts. We got our solution. You notice I have these red lightning bolts, which says we have a problem. Um, and if I look at my, my messages, the uh, I had a I had a message that there was a uh, in, unable to get a complete solution, and let's see. So this came to time six unconverged, uh, and then the the analysis you know, didn't converge entirely uh, but on the way there. Now. One of the things that I can do there is that it may have been too big a, a step in the loads, and, and because of that big load step, it may not be, be converging well. Um, I, and I could tweak a lot of parameters. Um, what I'm going to try tweaking first in this case uh, would be, let's do, um, let's increase the number of load steps, and... So let's come back to the moment. So it was it got to five successfully. It's had trouble getting from there. So let's go to minus four. Four. Minus six. And minus three. Minus four. Minus five. Minus seven. We'll add one more load step. Minus 
chant. Mm -hmm. So another possibility is that it may be an issue of mesh refinement. Um, and then there's, if I come under analysis settings, um, there's a lot that I can do in terms of my nonlinear controls down here. Um, though, if we can, we will try to keep these as program controlled um, parameters. But those are what's going to determine how it converges. So let's go ahead and I will restart the analysis and we'll see what happens. <coughs> So in this case, I got a good solution uh, by um, repeating the analysis with those smaller deformations. And you can see, uh, um, and, and it tells me down here in my info that the solution was executed using restart information. So it didn't sol resolve everything, started the last converged load step in order to, to speed up the solution process. Um, and you can indeed see indeed that the moment makes sense because that moment should form an arc, circular arc, which um, is what this looks like. So now <coughs> I have this case study that's running. Um, I can either for, um, and, and let's we'll go back and I'm going to change this to the turns large deflection off to show you how we do that. And now I'm going to go back to our parameter setting. And now these design parameters are all from the uh, all from the initial model, and I did not set a design parameter for my edge sizing, so I need to go back my element sizing. So I need to go back into the um, model, open up my ANSYS Mechanical and make that a parameter. So I can come back under Mesh, Body Sizing. I'm going to set that as a parameter so I can control that. Um, so now when I come back into my parameter set, um, I have my body size elements. Now I, I could run all of these cases at once. Um, but that's going to be a little bit uh, cumbersome. And so I'm going to set that all to one there. And now I've got my element size here. And I'm going to try, let's see what happens if we go 4, 2, 1, 0.5, 0.2. 25 and 0.125 for my element sizes. See how that affects the convergence um, of the stresses here. And we will, um, now I can run and update all design points. I'll point out I'm starting to get warning errors here um, and uh, related to these design points. We have uh, and you can imagine this is a linear analysis with large deflection, and it's going to cause some problems. And you may find that it's difficult um, or impossible to get a, a full solution um, of, for that case study. Um, we can also see here that my values are the same um, at each one of these, these points. And that can sometimes be indicative, indicative of a problem. I can see that I'm getting, no, it's not letting me uh, move this. So let's let it pause and finish updating, and then we can just diagnose. We can see that indeed we have some errors that uh, um, for design point one and two of my coarsest model, um, the, uh, there is some failure in there. And if we look down here, it's referring to that, that there's only one um, element in at least two directions. So that's a problem with uh, getting good uh, resolution. So it gives you a couple suggestions. One is to mesh with more elements, and the other is to change the, the integration element control. Um, if we look at the solutions here, um, you can see again the failed solutions up there. Uh, we can see that it's converging 
uh, to a solution um, with, but again, this is with linear analysis um, and is not actually the correct solution in this case. And so we would um, be more interested in coming back and editing, turning back on nonlinear deflections and seeing how the solutions behave in that case. Okay, so I've reopened the instance mechanical, come in here, and I can turn on large deflection on, and then we can reanalyze. Yeah, so we close the instance mechanical, we can come back into the parameter set, and you can see these are all lightning bolts because of the change from small deflection to large, turning on large deflection, that all needs to be reanalyzed. And so we can go ahead and hit update all design points and see how these results compare. So as we check in as, as it's solving, we can see some of the messages that it's again giving me, um, let's see, let's look at the latest. Um, you can again see that the early design points with very coarse mesh um, were not solving uh, correctly, um, even with the nonlinear deflection. And that's not a big surprise. It's too coarse a mesh to use. I should probably just eliminate those those design points uh, uh, for clarity anyway. <coughs> you check in back in here for an update, you can see we can look at the, the warning message here to see that too, but but uh, we can we can see that a lot of these design points are failing, and um, so this is this is concerning that there's some some issues going on there, and it's difficult to diagnose from this setting. So at this point, if you see that, what you want to do is to go back into mechanical and kind of manually run some of these design points. Um, I'm curious to see if this last one is going to solve, so I haven't hit stop yet, but if you needed to, what you can do is you see this progress button down here, so I can show or hide progress, so if I show it, now I get this red arrow, red box, I can click on that, which gives me a chance to abort the analysis where it is, and to go back in and, and look at uh, what is happening more carefully. Um, so that may be helpful to you in your, your iteration process. I'm not requiring a full design study of the no, number of nodes in this analysis stuff. So it can be enough to just uh, find uh, a case that, uh, that works adequately. And the aspect ratio is not as extreme in, your, uh, in the case that you're looking at for the, the homework as in this case that I've posted here. So um, hopefully that's helpful to you. I'll go ahead and uh, we'll follow up with some other, uh, other videos on some sub-elements of this. Um, let me know what questions you have and other things to be clarified, uh, helpful to have clarified in future videos.